guys as well to that updated rosters. If you need to get one of those, pick one up afterwards. Uh, so, Travis, you make it open to say something. I can ask a question. How are we doing? Great to be here, starting year four, excited about it. We had a really good team meeting today at 1.30, kind of set the tone for training camp and our expectations and objectives that we've got to get accomplished you know, as a football team. And I know you guys are meeting with our players at 4 o'clock. I will give you a heads up that this is our last day of summer school, so we still got a, got a lot of guys involved in classes and exams, so there will be some guys that will miss that that you'll be able to catch as we move forward in training camp. But it's, You've seen how we've done academically here last fall semester, having a cumulative GPA as a football team above a 3-0, much better than Josh Kendall ever did uh, when he was in, in college. First time in school history and the first time in my coaching career. And then you go to spring semester and we improved it. So very proud of our guys and the job that they're, they're doing a, uh, academically. At 6 o'clock tonight, we'll have another team meeting. And uh, for on his first day on the job in the 29th president of the University of South Carolina, uh, President Kazan will, will address our football team. So we're really looking forward to that and him starting his tenure here at South Carolina. There's two really important factors, in my opinion, of the really good teams and the championship teams that I've been a part of. Uh, they've got really good number one competitive and quality depth on their roster. That creates competition on your team. It creates a competitive atmosphere when a young man walks in the building every day, whether it's in the meeting room, it's in the weight room, it's on the practice field. He's got to compete. He's got to compete and he's got to bring it. And that, that, that creates consistency in his performance. And we have vastly improved ourselves uh, in that department as we move into this fall with, with multiple good players at positions to create more competition. And that's what you've got to be able to have. And the second thing is leadership. And I think this senior class, uh, number one, is always going to be very special to me in my tenure here at South Carolina. Uh, there's some guys that were here before uh, under Coach Spurrier and his staff. And you look at Joe Charlton, you look at A.J. Turner, you look at Mon Denson, you look at Kyle Markway. He's not a senior, but I put him into this class. Um, Danny Fennell. Uh, you know, all of those guys, Donnell Stanley's going to end up being a four-year starter uh, of guys that went through a coaching change. And that's always difficult. That's always tough. But they bought in to maybe a little different way of doing things, a different way of, uh, of working, and certainly have, have improved our program from day one uh, when we've been here to now. It's vastly different. And I really appreciate them. And then the guys that trusted us coming in uh, with a coaching change off a team that won three games and wasn't at a, we're at a very pretty bleak outlook on where we were as a program, and Jake Bentley and Brian Edwards and Chavis Dawkins and Sedaris Hutchins, not a senior, but I would throw him in that category. Javon Kinlaw and Eldridge Thompson were both junior college players when they came in a year later, but both guys that will be a part of the senior cast, Keel Pollard, Kobe Smith, uh, uh, Kira Thomas, Rico Dowdle, uh, Dennis Warnham, all guys that have had really good careers and going into their senior year. But this is a senior class that's got over 200 starts. I think there's eight guys that have over 20 starts. Uh, so, so guys have played a lot of quality football at a high level. So really proud of these guys. And really the you know, ownership is a huge part of leadership. And the ownership they've taken in our team to hold themselves, first of all, and then their teammates accountable to a championship standard. And that's, uh, that's what you got to have to be successful. So those two things, I think we've vastly improved ourselves. Uh, and we should have gone into year four. That's the bottom line. But I divide the season into uh, stages. Uh, we started the season in January in the off-season program. Uh, we moved into spring ball, we had our summer program, and now we're into training camp. In training camp mode, uh, you, you got to uh, approach it, number one, your mindset. Uh, you, a positive attitude doesn't guarantee you anything, but a negative one does. And our guys understand that. We address that with them. you got to come in every day to, to, being eager to get better, being eager to improve. Uh, every single day, as far as the things you do, we got to come together as a team right here during training camp. There'll be some moving parts where the guys changing positions are doing what we've got to do to be successful as a football team. There may be some new faces involved with that. But gaining the trust of your teammates, the communication, and all the things you've got to do in order to be successful. Being the best conditioned team uh, that we can when we start the season because the best conditioned teams are the teams that are able to battle through the physical and mental barriers uh, that you that you have to go through. So so be in great condition. And all by all accounts, we had a great summer based on our players and and Coach Dillman and his staff. We've had the best summer since we've been here. Uh, so so again, that goes back to our leadership and the, and the type of players we have in our program. Um, doing the things that take no talent. I talk to our players about it all the time. We call it the Gamecock stand, the effort, the toughness, the discipline, the team first mentality, and the competitive edge. None of those things take talent. 
Uh, you can show up and do those things every day regardless of the talent level that you have. But the bottom line, coming in every day in the building and creating the best version of you, that's really important. Uh, and our guys understand that as we continue to move forward, especially when you're going into a very difficult training camp, and, and it will be difficult. Uh, roster update, Jaquez Searles is still uh, working through some academic uh, you know, issues there. I will update you when I know more. It could be two days. It could be ten. So, so I'm not really sure what, where that is right now. Steve Fink has given you a roster of all the players that we can talk about. And if anyone's not on that roster, uh, then we can't address those players by NCAA rules. I've also addressed our players as they meet with you as far as that was concerned. So I'd appreciate you respecting that with our players and not putting them in a difficult situation. So uh, with that being said, our, our injury report really uh, obviously disappointed with Jalen Dickerson and the injury that he had that will put him out for the season. But he's rehabbing extremely well. Um, Kier Thomas had a uh, procedure on his ankle. He should be cleared in the, in the first week or so to be full go. He will be limited to start camp. And uh, J.J. Ambari had a scope to clean up uh, a, a meniscus on his knee. He's fine. He'll be cleared in the first week to be full go. Those guys will be limited uh, starting out. People always want to ask about concerns. Obviously, you're replacing a guy like Debo Samuel. The guy's an outstanding football player. He's one missed tackle and he could score on you. Uh, but he's also a gunner. He's also a kickoff kick returner four in three years. Uh, so he's, he was the best in the nation in that time in, in doing so. So that's not going to be filled by one person. I do think we've recruited well as far as receivers concerned. Shy and Josh Vance had a great summer. Randrikas Davis is healthy for the first time since his first year. Uh, we've got to find some guys that can return kicks, and I think we've got some viable candidates. Uh, but, but that's a huge concern. Sedaris Hutchinson moving to left tackle. Uh, you know, a guy that I think is more than capable, uh, but it is different from what he's played before. But he's got the athleticism to, to play the position. He showed that to us in spring, and I think he's had a really good summer. Donnell, we think, is his best position is playing guard. Uh, so you move a guy that started and played really well at the center position for you. So you're always chancing that because that's a critical position with the different snaps and being the shotgun pro predominantly, which we are. And Hank Manos and Chandler Farrell are both guys. And could be Eric Douglas in there at times. Eric's kind of our putty guy that can play a lot of different spots because he's extremely bright and athletic. Uh, you know, we're going to have a new right guard, uh, whether that's Javon Gwynn, Jordan Rhodes, MJ Webb. We're going to need some guys to step up there. And we've got to continue to develop some depth uh, and again, the athleticism is there at the tackle position behind Dylan and Sedaris. Uh, you know, on, this, on the defense, we've got to be much more consistent at the linebacker position than we were a year ago, whether it was misfits in the run, uh, misalignment, things that just really hurt us to cr create explosive plays. We've got to play much be better at the safety position. Uh, I'm young somewhat, but I am old fashioned. You better be good down the middle. And we just weren't last year call it like it is. We weren't very good at those two positions last year. We weren't as productive as we needed to be. Uh, and I think we'll be better. I think we have some talented secondary players there. They, there is some youth concern there. Uh, but I'd rather coach a really talented young guy than an old guy that can't play. So, so that's what we kind of look at there. And specialists, I think, will be outstanding with Joseph and Parker. And we've improved our team speed. Uh, we have more depth on teams to be able to play in space and, and speed. Uh, than we've had, and I think we got some viable guys that can be good returners for us. We're excited about today and looking forward to practice in the morning, and I'll open up for any questions. Raise your hand. We've got a microphone to you, David. Will, is there one position or one group that needs the most work, that needs to answer the most questions throughout this next month? Well, I think, you know, within our offensive line, the ability is there. I'm excited about that. We're more, we're more athletic and we're more powerful than we've been. Um, but we've got to find that, net, that, that best five, and then you want to go six, seven, and eight as you go into the season where you've got a swing tackle, a swing guard, and a backup center. And where those guys will end up, I'm not really sure at this point, nor you know, Eric and I have talked. And we're, 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 we're see how that plays out. And the thing about it is the offensive line is a lot like the secondary. The communication is key. You better be on the same page or you're going to have a bad day. And so, so those are things that we need to work through in camp and, and get to as quickly as we can so they can develop that cohesiveness that they're, they're going to need to develop. Coach, have you met with uh, President Caslin already? What are your early impressions on him? I certainly um, have. Very impressed uh, uh, with President Caslin. Obviously, you know, my brother went to West Point and played football at West Point as he did in the 70s. Uh, and so his passion for athletics is obviously important to us and, and his passion for football. I'm mean, looking forward to him addressing our team tonight. Uh, his resume and background speaks for itself. Uh, served our country for 43 years and numerous honors 
throughout our military and how he represented our country. So I'm, I'm really excited about his leadership here at the university. I don't know if you heard, I know he said if USC beats Clemson or any team that beats Clemson, they'll get an ice cream party. Are you going like to hold them to that? I like chocolate chip. <laughs> As, as you guys figure out the number two quarterback battle, what will be some of the things you're going to look for in those guys as you uh, continue to that point when, when you all make a decision on that? Production, taking care of the football, orchestrating our offense, uh, you know, doing all the things, that, not having silly issues as far as procedural issues when we get on the field, which we didn't in spring. So uh, who's the most productive player at the position? Well, I know, I know you haven't played a game, you haven't even had a, a practice yet, but is this the best you've ever felt about one of your teams uh, before fall practice starts? I well, mean, I I'm so talking about Florida or South Carolina. Well, I just think in terms of the competitive depth uh, that we have is, is something you feel much better about sitting in my shoes right now than we've had. I can, I can really only reference here because it's, it's, you know, it's, that's kind of how I reference the roster and where we've come. You know, we talked this morning as a staff and looking at 2016, 17, and 18 going in the season, the different depth that we had on both lines of scrimmage has not been where it's, it is now. Um, you know, the, the, the skill position players, uh, you know, the, the, the quarterback position to have, you know, the guys we feel like can, can, can play well for us, uh, you know, as far as the depth is concerned, defensively, uh, secondary skill position players. I mean, I'm, you know, feel like we just have more depth. And, uh, and I think Gene, is, as much as anything that I'm excited about is the leadership of the team. And I think our guys have really handled themselves well as far as those things are concerned. Well, you mentioned the offensive line as a group that probably needs the um, most work or maybe some of the uh, most questions. Is there one group that you have the most confidence in right now? Well, I mean, again, I think that there's, there's unknowns across the board for me in, in some positions where we're going to rely on some young players. You know, we've played more freshmen, I believe, than anyone in the country in the, in the previous three years. So if you're good enough, you're a player, you'll play. And if you're the best at your position, you'll start. And we, we've been proven to do that. So we're not afraid to play a young player. Uh, obviously, having a senior quarterback that's, that's played really well for us and having uh, quality guys in Ryan and to carry on that we think we have a lot of confidence in at the quarterback position. You uh, mentioned Brian Edwards. He's one of your first recruits when you took the job here at USC. Uh, going into his fourth year, how, with a lot of receiving records in reach, how big is he going to be this year for you guys? Well, he needs to play well, and I, and I know he will. I'm excited about Brian and going into his senior year. He's had a great summer. Uh, he really has attacked the summer. I've seen guys sometimes going into that senior year uh, of kind of coasting a little bit, and that's not been Brian. He's worked extremely hard. He's told me he feels like he's in the best shape he's been in since he's been at Carolina. He's as strong as he's been. Uh, he, he's had a great summer catching the football, so we're excited about him. Just sticking with wide receivers a little bit, um, just what about this group makes you think you'll be able to find some, some depth in some of those inexperienced guys after your first line group? Well, you're getting uh, Ortre Smith back, who played extremely well as a true freshman and really stepped up when Debo got hurt. Uh, Shia Smith has been a very productive player for us. We repped him outside during the spring, but we feel like he can play in the slot as well. Randricus, I mean, you go back to his first year, was a very productive player for us. He just had a hard time with that growing the last two years and flaring up and missing practice time and not having enough time to prepare the right way. He's as healthy as he's been, uh, but he's a dynamic guy that we feel really good about. Josh Van, we really challenged Josh this summer uh, to have a great summer to improve his strength, and he certainly has done that and answered that call. Chad Terrell was injured last year after he tore his ACL in the spring, so was never really at full speed, but a guy that has shown some flashes for us. Chavis Dawkins has been a very dependable player you know, through his career here and a guy that made a huge catch against Texas A&M uh, under duress, under coverage. Uh, so, again, I, I think that there's some good depth of the position. I think we've recruited well. Um, as you look to improve the rushing attack, is your primary focus individual performances from your running backs, the offensive line play, or something schematic? Well, I think it goes into, into everything you, you talked in terms of. Number one, running ourselves into good fronts. Uh, in our league, in most situations with our schedule, we're going to face uh, fronts that always have an extra hat. So we got to have that guy individually that can run through contact or make somebody miss. I think we did a, a pretty good job against good people of getting a hat on a hat in the run game last year and running into the good looks that we needed to schematically. Uh, we're more athletic and more powerful than we've been on the offensive line in the past. I also feel like uh, when you're able to create some threats outside, that obviously is going to help you in your run game. So there, there's a lot to me that goes into being successful into running the football with, with some of the teams that we're going to play, and that's part of it. Back, Greg. 
Coach, you've mentioned just off the top that this class will be special to you. And Brian was just talking about a moment ago, one of the first guys you got. I think you spoke to TJ Brunson the same day that you were yep. introduced here, right? When you look at some of these guys, how they've grown, matured, become leaders of this team too, do you think about where they've gone as players, what that means to you as a coach, and then your journey here through USC just through these Oh, absolutely. Well, I think that's why I enjoy – you know, I coached pro ball before, but that's really why I enjoy coaching college football, to see the matur maturation process of a young man coming into school and growing and maturing and, and going through some ups and downs. Uh, but, you know, most of, you know, all of these guys are walking out of here. Either some of them have already gotten their diploma and most of them are going to get it in December. Uh, but to see, you know, how they have – you know, transform themselves as people and to create the best version of them every day and get them ready for the rest of their life. And that's our job here at South Carolina. I think we do it as good as anyone as far as our Beyond Football program with Marcus Lattimore uh, and the different ways we're able to touch them uh, from a standpoint of a university. Well, I know, <clears throat> excuse me, I know running back is a position you wanted, uh, you want more production from, obviously. How do you think Thomas has done it, taking charge of the guys. And how do you think Rico and AJ and, and Mon can respond to, to uh, this season? Well, I think they've responded well. I thought they responded well in the spring. Rico wasn't able to be cleared for contact, but I thought Mon had a good spring. I thought Kevin Harris, for a young player, came in and did a nice job. Deshaun Fenwick has continued to mature. I'm looking forward to seeing Levante. We haven't seen Levante out there at all. He's been running track. Uh, he's been working out with us this summer, though. So, you know, I've been excited about all of those guys at certain points. We just need more consistency at the position. There's been flashes. Uh, we got to stay healthy at the position. So, uh, again, the, the consistency to me is the biggest issue that we've had. Uh, with Matt Oliveira and, and Nick Muse coming in, what makes both of those guys important? And is there some clarification on whether Nick will be eligible to play this year or does he have to sit out? Right. Matt uh, is a guy that uh, was at Maryland last year. He's got experience snapping uh, on the big stage on Saturday afternoon, and we did not have that on our roster. So that was a critical, critical uh, get for us. Excited about Matt coming, and he's going to be in, the, in our business school here at the University of South Carolina. You know, Nick was a, a guy that we were very impressed with when we found out he was in the transfer portals. We watched the tape at William & Mary. Great competitive edge. Came to camp and just had a fabulous workout, was testing, was off the charts as far as his numbers were concerned. Uh, but his biggest attribute is competitive edge. This guy competes. He likes ball. And, and he was an easy fit for us when he came to camp. And to see him work out, his athleticism, catching the football, was a really good fit for us and, and how we use our tight ends. We're, we're obviously appealing for his immediate eligibility. I don't know. When I know something, I'll let you know. Yeah, with, with Matt, um... Did y'all notice some? Did y'all notice in the spring that y'all needed another guy, or or did that just kind of come about uh, over the summer? We knew it before spring. We've heard that perhaps seven on seven camps, the prevalence of seven on seven camps, has made quarterbacks and receivers and skill players more ready when they came to college to to play college football. But linemen uh, are linemen more ready physically than they used to be. Are you getting kids who are? more ready to compete physically on the lines? I think, and you know my philosophy, as far as your position to where the position of the ball is, it's harder to play. I'm not saying it doesn't happen. Dylan, Dylan Wanham was a freshman All-American at right tackle for us, and I've had numerous guys, DJ Humphreys at the University of Florida, Dante Fowler, John Bullard. I mean, the, the, there's, there's a countless list of guys that have had tremendous success as line of scrimmage players in our league that have played for us. I do think it's more difficult, and I don't disagree that the decision-making process is made uh, for seven-on-seven seven for quarterbacks is certainly helped them as far as their growth process. But we don't play seven-on-seven. Seven. So a lot of that doesn't always transfer And when you get into 11-on-11 11 11 and you're playing in full gear. Uh, but there's no question from a decision-making process that is a huge evaluation to see a guy make decisions under duress to throw the ball in coverage out of coverage zone coverage whatever the case may be but uh, but there's no question seven on seven I think has helped quarterbacks mature quicker because they're able to take more reps in those situations football is a developmental sport you have to play the game you know you have to you have to get out there as, as, a, as a three technique and go take on a 700 pound double team that's how you get good at playing double teams and, and uh, th those things you can't do unless you're in full gear and you're practicing against the type of people we're going to play against. How has Zach Pickens done in that regard? He's done well. And I thought he had made a lot of strides. 
you know, Zach's a pleaser. He wants to please you. He wants everything to be right. And I've tried to explain to him, everything's not going to be right all the time. You're not going to get to the right hand placement all the time. You're not going to get your feet right all the time. You've got to be able to adjust, adapt, and overcome, especially when you're playing as close to the ball as you are. And I thought he made tremendous st strides in the spring. And how he plays in this fall camp will determine his, how his role will be in the fall. And I expect him to have a nice role. You're not a stars guy. We know that. But he obviously comes in with high expectations. Sure. Do you address that with him to say yeah. – you need to not think about that. You need to think about this. His expectations need to be of, of playing hard, coming in with a positive mindset every single day, being a great team member. All the things that we talk about as far as the Gamecock standard, which none of those things take talent. So it's about effort. It's about toughness. It's about discipline. It's about competitive edge. It's about earning everything you get in our organization every single day. And if you just worry about those things, we're not worried about the other stuff. Will, you mentioned uh, Debo right out of the shoots here today. Is Shai Smith as close as you have on this roster as far as kind of mimicking some of the things he could bring to the table and how much slack of deep that Debo left behind do you think Shai could pick up this well, year? I think Shai, you know, obviously he's got tremendous ball skills at the end of a catch. Uh, he's got really good catch radius to be able to finish plays. You know, I don't know that he's got the lower body Debo had as far as being able to run through contact. Because Debo is a lot like a running back in a lot of, a lot of situations. But, you know, Shai can stick his foot in the ground. He can make people miss in space. Uh, you know, I think, you know, we're expecting a big year from him. Has anybody ever told you you look like the guy from Texas a and the basketball coach? No. <laughs> he does. I thought you were him. He's buddies with Frank. <laughs> no. Nah. Buzz Williams? I, the beholder. <laughs> He's buddies with Frank. That's why I thought Frank would maybe playing a joke on me. <laughs> Uh, Coach, a couple of weeks ago when a reference was used at SEC Media Days, um, which we're not going to repeat here, but my point being is some of your players took to social media and they were passionate about the way how passionate you were. Can you just see a development in the trust that they have for you in comparison to year one and how has that evolved uh, heading into year four? You know, the coach and player relationship is a two-way street, you know, and, 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 and I, I think that players take the uh, personality of, their, of how they're coached and, and how they're dealt with and how, how they're taught. And we try to be upfront and honest with our guys and how we're going to be and how we're going to handle our business. And, um, and, uh, and that's, that's the way we handle things. And our guys understand that. And, and I think as you continue to be around our players more, which the long family operations facility has helped us a lot because we're around them a bunch more than we used to be because we're in the same building and we're all operating under the same roof. So, uh, but I think that the, the personality of your team continues to evolve and, and takes on your, your personality as a coach. And, you know, when you respond correctly to dumbass questions, that's what happens. Will, uh, Sedarius Hutcherson was named on Bruce Feldman's 50 uh, biggest freaks in college football list. What have you seen him do in the weight room or on the field that's freakish? Well, he's a, a guy that, uh, you know, we recruited out of uh, Huntington, Tennessee, right between Nashville, dead in between – uh, Memphis and Nashville. I, I think we beat UT Martin on him. He's about 240 when we recruited him. When we came on his visit, all the players asked him if he was a tight end. And he said, no, I think they won't play me offensive tackle. But just a guy that's worked extremely hard. He's completely bought into the nutrition part of what you got to do to be successful. I would say he's up in the 320 range right now, 318, 316. You know, I think he did 225, 38 times. Uh, you know, he's a guy that we've stopped on the power clean and the squat test just because he's, you know, he's, he's, he's bending the bar. Uh, but he's completely bought into the weight room in order to what it takes to be successful as a player. He's extremely smart. Um, but, uh, you know, we're expecting a big year out of Hutch. Coach, you have a lot of talented defensive backs coming in. If they end up being to, uh, ready to contribute right away, could A.J. move back to running back full time? Well, we didn't say he's moving to D.B. So, um, you know, A.J. plans on playing both running back and defensive back, and, and we're going as, – as what we see fit with our football team, where he will spend most of his time and what's best for our team and what's best for A.J. Because I think he can play both. Uh, he's shown that he could do that through spring. But, again, those guys will have opportunities. They were told that in the recruiting process, and that's the way it's going to happen. And if they're good enough to help us win on Saturday afternoon, you know, I tell our players all the time, every football decision we make – in our organization is about winning. It's not about who recruited who. It's not about who we like. It's about what helps us win. And, and if they can help us win, then they're going to play. 
Coach, I had the opportunity of talking with Mac Brown a couple of weeks ago, and he talked about the opener in Charlotte, about mm -hmm. the importance of recruiting the area. And also he mentioned about how he did not like coaching against former coaches and good friends. What are your thoughts about the opener? Well, I, I would agree with him on that. I don't like, like coaching against uh, – you know, I got a lot of respect for Coach Brown and the wonderful opportunity he gave Carol and I to go to Texas. And we had three great years, three of the best years I've had in coaching. Uh, as far as living in Austin and coaching the University of Texas, a lot of respect for him and the university. Um, I don't know that one game ever decides uh, where a young man's going to go, and if it does, you probably don't want him. Uh, so uh, our presence in Charlotte, I've expressed early in my tenure here to Coach Tanner that we needed to do as many things we could do to get a better presence, and we played NC State our second year and obviously scheduled this game with North Carolina. Uh, but I think it's a very fertile recruiting ground. You look on our roster, the number of players we have from that area and from the state of North Carolina. I don't view it as North Carolina, South Carolina. It's Carolina to me. You know, we only have four million people in our state. We don't have a big enough state just to recruit South Carolina. We've got to go into North Carolina, Georgia, and Florida. Uh, we're spending more time in Tennessee. Uh, that's what we have to do in order for us to be successful. Donnell Stanley come back for his sixth year this season. How important is his leadership and experience going to be on the offensive line? Well, it's critical, and he is an, an outstanding example for our players every day, the way he goes about his business, the way he works, the way he approaches the game, the way he approaches practice, the weight room. He's a great example for our, our young offensive linemen to see how you do things the right way. You've talked a lot about, obviously, General Castle a little bit, but I'm just curious as your thoughts on Harris Pastides and the impression he's made on you and your time here so far. Well, we've been very fortunate, he and Patricia, and how they represented the university, how welcoming they were to Carol and I uh, in coming to South Carolina. Uh, but uh, nothing but positive support uh, for athletics, nothing but positive support for our football program, for our student athletes. If I asked him to meet with a recruit, he's going to meet with a recruit. He was going to do anything he could do to help us be successful, and um, you know he'll be missed. Obviously, you guys are a little thin in the secondary, but but how much of a luxury is it to have the trio of Israel, RJ, and JC to sort of build that around? And also with RJ, is the expectation to, to, to be able to play him at that nickel spot or safety, or is he just going to kind of bounce back and forth? Well, we kind of train in terms of really concepts in the secondary, so we're not really just training in a position. So it's more of a conceptual standpoint. You do a lot of – there's a lot of carryover from nickel and safety. Um, to in their position and the different things that we look for from those positions. So uh, there's a lot of carryover there, but they'll be taught. You know, Israel and, and JC both are guys that have excelled for us in the off season and how they've you know handled spring ball and uh, and uh, and uh, the summer and excited about you know the progress they've made. JT Bay and Jamias Williams have made great strides at the safety position. Uh, Jamel Cook, I thought, has had a good summer, uh, and then we've got some young players that we're excited about. So. We'll, we'll play those guys. We don't, we don't worry about that. Uh, <clears throat> Parker White obviously has had ups and downs over his career. Now that he's a scholarship player, do you see a difference in his just facade, his mentality, knowing he's a scholarship guy and, and, and he's the guy you're going to rely on kicking the ball? Not really. Parker's always been a very calm, cool individual. He did have a shaky first year, and a lot of that was on me. I put him in some very difficult kicks in some situations I probably shouldn't have with a young player like that. Uh, but he went back in the offseason and worked extremely hard fundamentally on the things that he needed to work on. And that's why he had the year he had last year. He had a fantastic year last year. He's hit two game winners for us since he's been here. And, um, and I, I don't, I don't, I don't uh, blink at all if he's lining up to kick the game winner, I can tell you that. Coach, whether it's a tight end, whether it's a defensive back, when you have a transfer that comes in at any position and there's seniors there, what's the message you have to those guys? Do you say anything to them? Or do you kind of just, it's, it's kind of a established a, every day you have to earn it? You've got to earn it every single day. It says it on our board. And as far as our standard is concerned here at the University of South Carolina, you got to go compete every day. And if it's someone can help our football team, that can come into our football team and not be disruptive within our football team, then we're going to do what we've got to do to help our football team. Every football decision we make in our organization is about winning. Will, not, not only do you have a high school age son, but he's a real good football player. Does having his mom's athleticism. Okay. Um, does that give you um, a nice edge into having an insight into that age group right now when you're recruiting that you didn't have before? <laughs> No, I'm always hip. I mean, I've got, I mean, I've always been cool. 
I mean, I didn't need to have a teenage kid to be cool. Now, I get told by both of my sons, Jackson and Witt, how I'm out of date with things, and I'm not totally hip with everything. But I get told at home a lot that, so that's all right. Yeah, Mike's got some short pants on like Jake Bentley wears. <laughs> and some bad-looking socks, too, man. <laughs> you better be tough where I'm from. You wear those. It's funny you mentioned Jake Bentley. I was just going to ask. You have a four-year starter mm -hmm. back at quarterback. Uh, what is his mindset going into this year? And are, and are there things that he's, that he's going to really be focused on improving in order to get you guys – where you want to be? Well, I think, you know, the obvious things that, uh, that we got to do is take care of better care of the ball. You know, we have six interceptions in the red zone and 14 overall. And they weren't on, Jake, but, but we can, we've got to take better care of the ball. We're 6-0 we're and oh when we win the turnover margin last year. We're 1-6 when we don't. It's the most important stat there is. And, and we've got to take better care of the football and understand those situations. And that really comes down to decision-making. And, and throwing the ball to the right spots and on time and, and different things. And that all goes not just to the quarterback position. It goes across the board offensively. Um, but uh, excited about the experience he has, excited about his talent level, excited about his competitive edge, excited about his leadership ability, and uh, excited about his senior year. Jeff. Kind of following up on that, what, what's the difference in his mindset and his attitude going into this year as opposed to last year? You'd probably have to ask him that. I don't know that his mindset, just knowing Jake is, is, is a competitor, that he is, um, uh, that he has a, a different mindset than he's had before, as far as what he wants to do, and that's help our football team win games. Uh, you know, that's that's the, the refreshing thing about this group. And you know, I've talked about Brian Edwards having opportunities to break records. And you know, these guys want to win. At the end of the day, they want to win, and uh, and that's what's exciting about this group. Do you have a timeline for making a decision on a backup quarterback? No. When you make that decision, will it be based entirely on 2019, or do you have to look to the future in terms of the pecking order for those players? Based on what helps our football team win this year. Well, when it comes to uh, just the first quarter of games and offensive philosophy, say something doesn't go right, you, maybe you're down right away, does the, op, the philosophy change right away? Do you have to kind of flip the switch and say, all right, we're going to do this now, or does Brian like to keep it pretty even? Well, I mean, I, I think we're always in just thinking in terms of what, what is it going to do to help us win the game. And, you know, you know philosophically, we, we would love to stay balanced offensively. Uh, we want to dictate the tempo of the game. And we want to run the ball in critical situations, meaning short yardage, red zone, end of game situations, and goal line. And you know, the three things we talk about from my standpoint. Um, but then I followed it up by saying, you know what, if we need to throw it 50 times, let's throw it 50 times. Yeah. You know, if we need to run it 50 times, well, we're going to run it 50 times. We're going to do what it takes to win. Because really, at the end of the day, only one stat matters, and that's winning. And uh, so that's kind of philosophically where we are. And with that, you know, Jake sometimes has come out for some first quarters and had some rough moments before putting it together the rest of the game. Is that something that you guys have talked to him about? Is that something he's come to you and said, I need to work on this? And what's the solution to that? Well, I think he's played very well in the first quarters, too. So, so I think that there's a balance in that. And, uh, and, you know, we talk a lot about openers, about comfort level, and, and it really all goes to that position. So let's do a really good job as a staff of putting him in situations of comfort level of things he's comfortable with. And that means narrowing down certain packages, then let's narrow down certain packages. But let's make sure from a rep standpoint that we're repping it against all the looks we could possibly see. Middle field, split safety, quarters, two deep, whatever we're seeing, fire zone, three deep, uh, two trap, whatever we're going to see. Let's make sure that these these calls are, are we're good in these looks. And that's that's something we can do better as a staff. Um. It's probably the last thing on your mind, if if it's even on your mind. But as far as like potential jerseys, uniforms you guys might wear this season, now there, there's some buzz a few weeks ago about that stuff. Is there anything you, you, you can hit share? The, head this the nail on the head. That's the last thing I'd have thought about. I'm hoping the we're, our where our lines are good tomorrow. Um, but <laughs> well, you're a big fashion guy. You're commenting on Mike's, oh, absolutely, Mike's I mean, gear. Totally so. into fashion. Um, no, nah, I don't know. Okay. Well, with TJ missing uh, some of the spring, what other linebackers stepped up to you during that time, and right. where do you see well, the status of that position? Well, I thought Ernest Jones did some really nice things uh, from a communi 
communicating standpoint, we put a lot on our Mike linebacker, and uh, and I thought Ernest did a really nice job uh, of of transitioning to be that guy. I think it was really good for him. I thought Sherrod made some strides. Sherrod athletically is what you want, uh, and I thought you know a guy worked extremely hard and was was very consistent through spring, and that was something we really challenged him with. Damani Staley uh, had a really good spring and has even had a better summer as far as working hard, uh, being communicative, do, doing the things you got to do to be successful. Uh, Derek Boykins is a young player uh, that we're excited about coming along in our program. Eldridge Thompson didn't was in non-contact for the spring, uh, but a guy athletically we're excited about. Rosendo Lewis has done some nice things for us. Uh, we're going to start him out at Sam Linebacker. Uh, he did some nice things there at the end of the year for a true freshman. Um, and uh, Jamar Brown is a, is a young player we're excited about in the program as a guy athletically uh, can, can do some things for us, definitely on special teams, and, and we'll see where he, where he fits on defense. Is there a possibility schematically where Ernest could stay in the middle, like Sky and TJ play together, where Ernest and TJ play together? Well, we're going, we're going to get the best three out there when we're in regular, and we're going to get the best two out there when we're in nickel, and when we're in nine, we'll get the best one out there. And they're all interchangeable to us. We, those guys can play both positions. As a coach, what has it been like kind of watching Jamel's journey thus far on campus, where he comes in, obviously has to spend the year sitting out, comes through the spring where it sounded at the end like you weren't super satisfied, and then through this summer where it sounds like he's kind of stepped up a little bit? Well, again, I think that you know the, the summer program is all about accountability. It's about work ethic. It's about going in every day from a weight room standpoint. It's about the player run practices of – being really dedicated to continuing to improve yourself. And I thought he made some positive strides, not to be confused with where we need to be. Okay, so so I think that that's it. I mean, I think it's always tough from the standpoint of, you know, transferring. And transferring all happen for different reasons. There's no one lump reason why a guy transfers. And uh, wanted to get closer to home was one of, the, one of the things. Wanted a fresh start, felt like he needed a fresh start. And, and that's normally, to me, is, is the biggest uh, probably, you know, deciding factor in a lot of transfers, guys want a fresh start. They want a, they want a different atmosphere, whatever. And so, uh, but, but I think he's done a nice job. He worked hard for us in the fall. Uh, he came along in the off season. I thought it just showed some flashes in the spring and he's improved in the summer. He's got to continue to take strides forward. There hasn't been a whole lot of regional buzz on DJ Wanham, uh, but how, first of all, uh, do you feel like he's back to his pre-injury form and how important is he to the success of this defense, both from a pass rush standpoint and defending against the run? Well, you know, John, he's a really good football player. He's very instinctive. He's very smart. Uh, but, you know, DJ's going to be the first one to walk through tomorrow morning. He's going to be over there on the side getting himself warm. So all the young players are going to walk in, and they're going to see how you do things the right way. And we missed that. He only played five games for us last year. And we, it hurt us. And we went, you, know, you win the Tennessee game with a three-man pass rush when DJ knocks the ball off the guy and Javon recovers it. I mean, so the, you missed a lot of that last year. We missed, we missed a lot of that last year. So, again, a really good football player, but probably a better person as far as, it, you know, the type of person he is. He was named a team captain. I think the only one, the only the third one in school history is a sophomore. He and Jake Bentley and Hayden Hurst. Uh, so he's got the great respect of his teammates and how he goes about his business. So uh, we're really excited to have him back. And he does look – he looks great. You have a lot of experience returning on the defensive line. Is there a maximum number of guys that you would like to be in the rotation for a given game? There's never a maximum number of guys. You play as many as you can play, especially early here, uh, as hot as it is. You know, when a big guy runs out of the gas, he's done. I mean, he's, and the most exerting thing you do as a player is rush the passer. So once they run out of gas, you're not getting a guy. You, the, the little guys, the skill guys, they can come back. They, they can get their win back. But once a big guy is spent, we never want them playing four to six more in, in plays in a row. Uh, and you always got to get concerned. Last year, you know, we were very young in our backups. They were all true freshmen. So we never wanted both of them to be in together because you're always concerned about the communication issues and what they go through adjusting in those situations. So we had to play some of the older guys more than we wanted to, especially early in the year. Uh, but but we, we like to be able to get, you know, no, no more than four to six snaps in a row. Uh, but, but you never are going to have enough defensive linemen to be able to stay fresh, especially early in the year, to rotate as many guys as possible. Um, <clears throat> just with all the stuff here on campus, all the stuff that the university has invested, um, do you put sort of a, a number on what you want to get from that, you know, wins-wise or recruits-wise, or do you feel more pressure since the university has given you everything to succeed, uh, I guess, monetarily to, to turn the product on the field? Our goal doesn't change. We want to win the East and win our state. 
Coach, you said today that you guys had a meeting, you all got together. What was the feeling like for the team getting together, knowing that tomorrow is the first official practice of camp? How's everyone feeling? Well, I mean, again, everybody's there. Everybody's in a chipper mood today. They'll be chipper tomorrow. Ask me that question, practice eight. Um, with JC, when he took on the role he kind of did last year, did that show a certain level of maturity? And, and, and personality-wise, has he changed a after his first year? Is he kind of still very much the same guy as he looks sort of toward next year? You know, I always say this. In, in playing as a freshman, to me, number one, you got to have ability. I mean, you got to be good enough. you got to have an opportunity. But then the third factor is you, you got to be mature to line up in front of 80,000 people at 17 years old and be asked to do some very difficult things against really good players in our league on our schedule. So those three factors to me are the critical things you, that you have to have. And he's, he is a very talented player. Uh, he did have an opportunity, and he's a very mature guy. He's a very driven guy. And I've told the story before. Uh, you know, here's a guy that I checked curfew last year during camp, and there's two guys not in their bed, and it's Israel and, and JC. Well, they're back over here watching film at night at 10.30. They're supposed to be in their bed at 10. You know, that's a good thing. And, and I wish, you know, more guys would see that. And, 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 and the good thing is, you know, his mentality, and, and I would include Israel in this, their, their mentality has become very contagious on our team to see that that's the way really good players do things. And, and I think a lot of the young players especially see a guy have the success that he's had, and they say, man, that's, that, that's, that's the way you're supposed to do things. That's the way you're supposed to carry yourself. Uh, so he, I think maturity is a big part of that. Tyreek Johnson was obviously the guy that went down early. Yeah. Um, just what are your expectations for him this year, and how do you feel like he can come, kind of impact that defense? You know, Colin, we were really excited about Tyreek. You know, he went through spring with us, and, and a guy that's got plays with power. He's really strong. He can pull the point. He's really strong-handed, heavy-handed guy. Uh, unfortunately, I believe it was a second practice in a non-contact situation with his ACL. Uh, but uh, we think he's got a tremendous upside. Uh, unfortunately, he's been out of football for a while, so I think you know, I, I kind of told him you're going to have to knock the rust off a little bit and don't get frustrated and keep just keep pounding away at it. But uh, he is a wonderful young man, uh, you know, just, just a delight to have in the program. Uh, after DJ, who would you say your best pass rusher is? Oh, that's up for debate. That's why you practice there, Hale. I'm tired of questions, I'll be honest with you. I'll see you all later.